Hello again guys, how's it going? It's Fake here coming at you with another This Week in Rune Terror and I literally made a This Week in Rune Terror like a couple days ago. However, there's been a fair bit of updates, so I figured let's uh let's let's full send it today and go through what's happening currently right now. So before we dive deep into some of the new information we've received in Rune Terror, I want to go over deck of the week. I want to like throw this at the start of the video to bring some hype for a moment, and we're gonna talk about Silver Fuses Karina Control to Masters. Uh, she went from D4 to Master with uh, Karina Control. This has been a non-existent deck for quite some time. It's seen some niche play during certain parts of a patch where everyone's playing a certain deck. But other than that, it's really, it's an outdated deck. But with the addition of Gohard and maybe a buff to Black Spear and what some of the certain decks we're facing in the meta, seems like Silverfuse has done a fantastic job with this. So... Uh, last last time in the video, I did not leave a link to the deck. So this time around, if you want to play this deck yourself, you can jump down to the description. There'll be a link there for you guys. But yeah, GG to Silverfuse. Fantastic job. Deck of the week for me. But more importantly, guys, I was not expecting or thinking about upcoming patches in Rune Tower because I was aware that we weren't going to be receiving any card changes for new... Oh, not new cards, but I was aware we weren't going to receive any more card ch changes prior to the seasonal tournament. So I just didn't think about the fact that we might receive another patch, but we indeed are going into patch 1.15 very shortly. It's not bringing any card changes, but a couple of interesting things to look at. Like, for example, not limited to a new lab recursive hero. So basically, your champions always start in your hand. When your champion is killed, it becomes imprisoned in a landmark that spawns in its place. A Jailer will spawn on your opponent's side of the board as your champion is imprisoned. Kill your opponent's champion to revive your champion next round. So this is a really fun and interactive way of just kind of mucking around with Runeterra's gameplay. That's typically what these... um. Sorry, what are they called again? That's typically what these uh, labs are though. They're pretty much ways of like really diving deeper into the uniqueness of Runeterra's gameplay and mucking around with some of the mechanics. So for anybody who enjoys these kind of things, this one does look pretty cool. And uh, yeah, GG to anybody out there that's gonna give it a go. But I think one of the most important things we're gonna look at here today is uh, we're getting some changes for round timing. This is a big one. This is like, it might not seem like it right now, but this is gonna change, especially for high level play. For casual gamers, it's gonna be a big reward to them because in a sense, as we get down to the further information, things are going to be speeding up. But let's go into uh, detail with this. So with the release of patch 1.15, we're rolling out an update to round timers to help smooth out the pace of each game. Here's a look at the new a, uh, UI. So you can basically see here you've got like the little blue timer and this red timer. But yeah, let's talk more about what that actually means. So banked time, I guess one of the biggest things to take note of is pretty much uh, round timers are the same thing, right? But we have this thing called banked time. So you're on borrowed time, act quickly to bank extra time for later rounds, which is basically time banking. Ending your turn earlier will bank extra time. Once you've stored up some time, you can spend it on more complex turns that require a little bit more extra thought. And then we have time fall off. Taking identical actions, i.e. vault breaker, within a round gives less additional time that action is taken so an example is vault breaker um and uh, what's another example of a card that interacts like that i really can't think of anything off the top of my head but if you have any like repeatable cards like or oh, hush once upon a time but i think even playing like the same card in a turn is probably going to have a similar effect but yeah it's basically to stop these um i'm assuming that's going to help to stop some ridiculous combos but more specifically like yeah, it's kind of a weird one that they talk about the uh, identical actions. I'm not too sure about the implications of that and what that truly means, but I wonder if they're doing this to avoid weird combos going into the future. It might not be necessarily for general gameplay, but to deny certain interactions coming into the future. Like we've seen some ridiculous like combos in one turn that allows players to infinitely loop, causing your opponent to never take a turn. I think this is to help with that. And like weird niche combos where you draw through your deck over and over. I've seen something recently using Prodigy uh, that could be to stop that as well. But yes, I'm not too sure if they've actually adjusted the original time per turn. But I can safely say that I think you're going to have a certain amount of time starting off the game as you go on and on. And uh, 
if you're taking an incredible amount of time each turn, you're gonna notice a trend that you're gonna start running out of time a lot quicker. So definitely something to keep your eyes out for, especially if you're a roper like myself, sometimes you simply can't muck around anymore. Interestingly enough, we're also getting player profiles. Um, introduces, uh, we're introducing player profiles, accessed by clicking and tapping a profile icon, blah, blah, blah. It, providing an overview of your collection, completion rate, region road progress and more like i'm not too impressed with the collection rate or like it's cool to have in the region road progress but i hope that this this end more provides something more because at the moment it's just kind of like a clean way of helping players track their card collection that's not something i'm personally too excited for although it's a, i'm not complaining about them adding it in it's just like hearing about player profiles like I'm sure a lot of players like myself are probably more interested in seeing like, you know, like are we going to get like achievements or are we going to have like, like maybe like these seasonal tournaments, for example, we might have like a track record of how we've performed in those. Who knows? Speaking of which, seasonal tournaments, we're aware of this. It's what's coming. It's what's going to happen during patch 1.15. But more importantly, in addition to cash prizes for the top 32 competitors, all season tournament participants will receive a tournament competitor icon. So anybody who plays in a tournament will receive this icon on the left. But if you secure at least three wins during a tournament, so it gives people a reason to continue playing, even if they lose one of their games, you'll receive the card back. That's kind of cool. Also got some personalization stuff coming up. Obviously this is gonna be, I guess we're getting to that Christmas point of the year. We've got the uh, snowy glade board. We've also got the uh, new guardian, which is called Oompa. Personality Frosty likes eating snowflakes, of course. Card backs, a new card back with the Oompa character. We've got a bundle here as well, which comes with, I believe that's an emote on the uh, middle right here, as well as an alternative costume for Oompa. I'm not a big Christmassy kind of spirit when it comes to these things, you know, uh, but for anybody who's interested in celebrating and supporting Riot in whatever way, you can go ahead and get that. We've got some uh, updates to Expeditions. We're talking about some of the card packages. I've never really kept much up to date with um, Expeditions. Unfortunately, I don't think it's one of the most exciting uh, game modes. I think uh, this, they, 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 need, they need to give us real reasons to enjoy Expeditions. Like at the moment, this is, this is nothing really, you know, incentivizing to play it. I think something really cool in the future might be to have like a monthly Expedition tournament of some kind like it's just an in-game it doesn't have to be like a massive tournament but just like people can enter into this like expedition like leagues thing or like you know have like some sort of rank for that but um it's just a bit too casual for uh, my personal taste we also have some language support for vietnamese we also have a uh, interesting enough here the disable motion option is now also going to be available which is going to disable some uh well, motion. So for anybody who might more, most importantly, have photosensitiveness, really relevant for them. But also I think it might help uh, for anybody who might be playing this on a not so powerful computer, maybe disabling this will allow your computer to run uh, Runeterra a bit more smoothly. We also have some bug fixes. They're talking about fixing the issue with Jinx, uh, but they also mentioned that they already did hot fix it. But they also fixed an issue where emotes could get stuck on the loadout panel. Uh, I never ran into that issue. So heading over into the world of the Law Masters Europe, we have our top eight contenders. And uh, if you didn't check out the last list Rick and Runeterra, we discussed the uh, potential outcomes and everything kind of ended up with the expected teams to win winning. So there wasn't any upsets for the lower tier players getting a win and then winning tiebreakers. I think they'll... I'm not too sure if there actually was tiebreakers or if because of certain matchups and having won against a certain team, maybe there was no tiebreakers. But I think if there was uh, any tiebreakers, any team who actually went ahead to get their group stage win to force a tiebreaker did not win that. So in uh, let me just pull up this picture here. So for our quarter finalists, we have in the first seeding, Spain versus Czechia. That's going to be a tough it's gonna be tough. It's gonna to be like Chechia's really 
uh, proven to be quite insane, especially with their fearsome mid-range deck, really really causing waves in Runeterra. I think uh, Chechia is definitely a team to fear and one who I would put a prediction on to win this series if they draw, you know, half decently. <laughs> Uh, in the next seeding, we have France versus Poland. I'm going to put my bets on Poland just because of Alan. You know, he's quite a well-established player. I'm not too sure about who's uh, rocking up from France, but uh, definitely putting my bets on Poland. But who knows, France might draw really good. Portugal versus Italy. I'm rooting for Portugal, but at this point, I'm not entirely sure between these two teams who's going to prove to be the best. I've been tuning in quite a lot to on Portugal because I know some of the players playing on that team but um, I'm not too sure who's uh, playing it over on Italy I didn't get a chance to watch them much so maybe they're a team to fear and Portugal should be on edge but um, I'm going to put my bets on Portugal uh, and then into our final group we have a Germany versus Croatia this is going to be a close series I believe uh, every game is going to be down to the wire and I think um, I mean Germany is rocking fresh lobster He's a pretty well-established player, but I know Croatia has um, Ani Dezu, who's a wider, well-reformed player as well. So that's going to be a close series. Uh, if Germany draws well, they'll probably take it home. If Croatia draws even better, who knows how. It's going to be a close one. So this means that uh, our potential semi-finalists and the way everything's going to line up, one of my favorite segments of the week, and that is going to be the clip of the week even though as i said we did this like two days ago but anyway i'm i'm muting the audio on this clip because i think you know dmca and stuff like that i don't want to be in you know involved in all that crazy nonsense but this is simply titled gotcha op let's have a geese shall we and judging by the amount of those spells and the karma on the field well i guess you could say gotcha's OP, or you could also say Karma doubling up spells is quite strong. The funny thing here is that if you look at uh, our hand for just BBTV, the repost and Spirits Refuge honestly can't do a lot against this because you can't like add another barrier or react to the spells at fast speed because these are burst speed spells. So that's quite an hilarious play. However, what I'm curious about is that um, is he actually surviving? Yeah, there's still still just uh dying to this attack but yeah pretty cool clip before i move to the next segment if you haven't subscribed consider subscribing it won't cost you a thing no credit cards involved and you can unsubscribe at any time thank you guys so i received a, a little bit of co uh, feedback on the last uh, video we did some people are interested in seeing some of the popular meta decks talking about a tier list some maybe weren't as concerned about that i want to meet somewhere in the middle today so instead of going through a full meta breakdown or not talking about anything at all i just want to talk about maybe week to week or not every week this is a standout deck that's something that's causing waves in the meta game and shifting a lot of things in its balance and i think by now if anybody's not aware the deck i'm going to be talking about today is going to be the fearsome mid-range mist wraiths deck that runs pale cascade and nothing else but shadow wilds cards this this deck single-handedly i think is going to cause a ripple in the metagame and the upcoming seasonal tournament this deck is fantastic i want to talk about the fact that i don't believe it has a bad matchup and why that is so the first thing to point out here is the fact that we are a pure Shadow Isles deck that wants to run Wraith Caller. And Wraith Caller is a fantastic card that goes along with side with Miss Wraiths and Fearsome and is just makes sense to be running almost a pure Shadow Isles deck. Because if you miss that allegiance, it really sucks on Wraith Caller. You're playing a 4 mana 4 3, that's like you may as well be playing a Yordle Grifter that does nothing. But um, we'd seen players building this similar deck, pretty much the same deck minus the Targon Pale Cascade so that they can guarantee allegiance with Wraith Caller, but the addition of Pale Cascade makes a lot of sense in this deck. I'm surprised nobody thought of something like this a lot earlier. Pale Cascade's a very strong card. Uh, it, there's nothing else to say about that there, but the fact that we're putting on top of fearsome units is what makes it insane. It also causes this deck to, which had uh, certain cards that would be effective against this deck in the past not so effective like one mana pings and cards like withering rail from shadow isles and avalanche that alongside the addition of mark of the isles can allow this deck to push ridiculous damage out of nowhere 
So this deck began, began uh, becoming very popularized after Czechia Republic had brought that along to their Law Masters Europe tour and really started to cause a trend for other European teams to bring the same deck as well. Now, what's going on here? So basically, we're just a strong aggro mid-range deck that literally has a really powerful control tool in the Harrowing, causing this deck to have truly have no bad matchup and have the ability to even take games off ramp decks, which you would think that any aggro deck would not. I guess the most uh, similar deck I can think of in recent times is going to be Harrowing Darius at its when it was at its peak of its performance, where it was basically an aggro deck that just had the late game bomb of the Harrowing, causing it to really truly not have a hard time obviously cards like deny exists but usually those decks that run deny are decks that usually can't deal with early game aggression which this deck truly does have and the ability to go a bit wider causing it to be a bit more of a powerhouse deck over harrowing darius in the past because harrowing darius is like a deck that would uh kind of play more mid-range you curve out into darius as well as playing big units so you're able to like stun him and uh, use like cards like Thermobeam are a bit more effective, but those cards are not as effective against a Swarm deck, which is what this deck is, alongside like cards like Stalking Shadows and Frenzied Skittera with Elise and Stygian Onlooker as of more recently, uh, makes this deck go really, really insane. And it's fun seeing Risen Miss find success in our list, but yeah, if you haven't already, check this deck out. I'll also leave a link to this in the description below. But I do believe this deck is top of the metagame, even if it's not official yet. I would not be sleeping on this deck, and I would not be surprised if at the upcoming seasonal tournament that this deck sees a lot of representation. Alrighty, thank you once again for tuning into this week of Rune Terror with your host fake hero um if you did enjoy this video do not forget to leave a like and if you have any further questions you know where to leave them down in the comments below if you are interested in seeing anything else in this segment uh that's also the place to go to so drop them down in the comments leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it and as i said just a little second ago subscribe it does not cost you a thing and it means the world to me have a fantastic day i'll see you maybe in a week in a, a bit maybe it really depends what happens in runeterra it really depends. Who knows? Have a good day.